hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to be doing uh, lab six, which is the aldol condensation. Uh, so the reaction that we're going to do is we are going to combine benzaldehyde as well as acetone, which is the exact same thing that we just clean everything with. Uh, and uh, we're going to do the only two to one reaction in the entire course. So pay attention to that when you're calculating your percent yields. That is, two benzaldehydes are combining with one acetone to make a single dibenzal acetone product. Uh, I'm not going to get into the mechanism right now. I'm actually just going to jump straight into the procedure. Uh, so this whole thing is actually just a hand shook reaction because it occurs rather quickly. Uh, in this 40 mil screw top vial, I have uh, 0.75 milliliters of benzaldehyde. To this, I'm going to add uh, 0.3 mils of acetone. I've got everything else pre-measured, um, but acetone is both volatile and it eats this type of plastic, so I'm going to move this pretty quickly. Lastly, this is our aldol catalyst solution, which is uh, potassium hydroxide, which is our basic catalyst, dissolved in a mixture of ethanol and water. Three mils of that, going in. Now, this reaction, notoriously, as we've learned throughout the years, does release quite a bit of gas as it proceeds. Uh, and so what I'm doing right now is I'm just swirling it open top to allow some of that gas to escape before I put the cap back on and shake it. Uh, what I'm expecting to happen is this should turn from clear to yellow color and then eventually kind of a pleasant peach color. It's going to be nice. We're already getting a little bit of yellow coloration in this. And I'm going to shake like this, and about every minute or so, I'm going to vent this. And it's going to stay nice and boring because we're venting so often the pressure is not allowed to build up. Shaky, shaky, shaky. And maybe you can see that yellow color start to develop there. I actually expect the solid to start forming and because uh, if you look at the structure of the product it's really really nonpolar not only is it symmetrical but it's got those two giant uh, benzene rings attached to it uh, this solution that we're working in is water for some part and the presence of water in the solvent system is going to make the really really nonpolar product precipitate out. And so you can see it's gone from clear and I've got some chunky stuff up on the sides of my container as well as this is getting all cloudy. So that's my solid that I'm collecting. Um, so the product is mostly made by now. I'm just going to shake it a little bit more. 
in order to collect this solid and get it away from the liquid, I'm going to use vacuum filtration, uh, more specifically a nuclear funnel. Okay, give me one more. gloves actually got a little bit wet because as pressure built up along the rim of my uh, container uh, the liquid pushed itself out and so I'm going to swap gloves very quickly but you can see how cloudy it has gotten and how the sides of my container are actually plastered with solids. Clean gloves. Um, so after the shaking has been done uh, I am going to go ahead and uh, I've got ice water already ready over here. Um, is my funnel on the shot right now? Okay, can we see this on the camera? Thank yes. you. Yeah. Um, so here is my vacuum filtration setup. I've got a piece of filter paper which I've already weighed um, so that later on I can just weigh the dry product on top of it. Uh, that's going to go in, and I'm going to go ahead and turn on the vacuum. It sucks down the paper, and just hit this with a bit of ice water. And now it's wet and it sucks down, so there's very little chance of any solid escaping down and out the bottom of my filter paper. And so now I'm going to dump all of this just straight on top. Ooh, it's sludgy. And there is a ton left in here, so I'm going to use ice water. Go ahead and collect this. And again, this product is super non-polar. So if it didn't dissolve in normal temperature water, it definitely is not going to dissolve into this ice water.
when we just cut, we were drying our crude dibenzal acetone products on a nuclear funnel. That dried for probably about 15 minutes and I smashed it flat a couple of times just to make sure that it was drying evenly. And what I got as a product was this flaky, pasty salt, uh, bright yellow. You can see that a lot of that red coloration that we saw in the reaction is gone by now. Uh, that went and washed away uh, in the uh, filtration step. Um, so the mass of our crude product here is uh, 0 0.4403 grams. Uh, so uh, with our conversion factor to figure out how much uh, ethanol we need to uh, recrystallize our product, uh, our conversion factor is for every 0 0.4 grams of solid, we need one milliliter of ethanol. Um, so go ahead and figure out how much ethanol I'm going to need to do my recrystallization. Okay. So the amount of ethanol that I need is approximately 1.1 milliliters. At least that's the best that I can measure with the tools available. Um, so I'm actually just gonna use a syringe for this and pull straight from this ethanol squirt bottle. So there's one mil. And let's get another 0 0.1 mil in there as well. solid appeared, it may be more difficult to see, um, but it's actually very angular, 
and sharp and pointy crystals. Uh, that sharpness and that pointiness and the glossiness of the crystals is a great indicator that our crystallization has worked. That's a great visual indicator that uh, we have crystals and not, as opposed to that, a precipitate, uh, which forms very quickly, doesn't help with purifying anything, and just looks like a sandy, opaque solid. Uh, moving on. Um, we are going to use a beaker funnel to collect these purified crystals. Um, so I'm going to turn that on. Making sure that my paper is stuck down onto the funnel. With a little bit of ice cold ethanol. And this is just so solid and chunky. I'm gonna go ahead and scoop it out at first with a little bit of spatula there. Try to keep it cold. And let's collect. And a ton of it is left over. I'm gonna get out what I can with a spatula. And then just use a few portions of ice cold ethanol to try to collect as much as I can. And you can always cool things down, just dip it in the ice bath. That room temperature cooling took forever because it was just through air, but by using ice water we can very quickly cool things down this way. One more, just use the rest of my ethanol here. Ta-da! Okay, uh, so over here we have our crystals which are sucked up against our paper. Um, ethanol is going to dry pretty quickly, which is the main component uh, of the solvent here. Um, these crystals are really shiny and flaky and beautiful, and I am going to ruin that completely by smashing them with a spatula, increasing the surface area and forming a fine powder that's going to dry really, really well. I'm going to go ahead and crank my vacuum. And this is actually going to be dry within about 10 seconds. A very common question I get when we're doing uh, labs that involve buchner funnels is, how do I know if my solid's dry? Um, so the best indicators are that you can pick up your powdered solid and it falls off the spatula without sticking to it at all. Great indicator there. Um, also, I'm looking at the color and the appearance of the filter paper underneath. If the filter paper's wet, there's still more liquid to remove from the system. Uh, if the filter paper looks dry and opaque, just like when it started, that's how you know your solid on top is probably dry as well. Okay, so this is completely dry. And I'm just going to bring it over to the camera and show you guys. So, this is the appearance of my uh, product, my dibenzyl acetone. And it's very flaky, um, it's very shiny, even though I've smashed it, because it is rather purified and crystalline. Um, and so what I would hypothesize is that if I took melting points of my crude material earlier, uh, which I saved a little melting point sample of, um, as well as this recrystallized product, uh, I would expect this 
to have a higher and sharper melting point, which is closer to the literature value, uh, as opposed to the crude stuff, which I would probably assume has a depression of 10 or 15 degrees and a much broader melting point. Um, so uh, we are going to take all of that characterization um, along with a, uh, a mass of the products so that you can calculate the yield from this um, and send that to you guys with this video.